rescue completely bombed in your eyes or games that um one that i have not yet played that um uh that the new mass effect game that one so. yeah yeah that had a lot of controversy and especially since you know the, the first three games which you love you know did so well were such an interesting story yeah and drama to... I feel like that's kind of uh you don't get a lot of games that are just blah you either have these games that are you know these crazy hits or these massive disappointments yeah yeah there's not a lot of games where you're just like oh this one was this game was okay i guess you know like maybe you just don't hear yeah. about those games yeah and the reason I, I bring it up is because um not to spoil but this game uh it's pretty universally considered to be a fall flat in your face oh and was highly anticipated huh what about you so this do will you be a very any, interesting do you have any disappointments that you can share with us Oh, um, Fallout 4 for me was a big disappointment. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, it's not a critical failure, obviously, but to yeah. come off such a high of Fallout 3, and especially Fallout New Vegas, mm -hmm. to go to 4, it really felt like there wasn't that magic that was present in the first two. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether there was just a focus on the wrong elements, or that there was, um, it was very difficult to translate every feature into uh, modern, sort of next-gen graphics or next-gen systems, but... It, it it didn't capture my imagination the way the first two did. Hmm. That's too bad. Yeah. Um, anyway, enough with our ramblings. Uh, people are waiting to see us play, so tell us who... Rolling Action Gamers! And today we're trying to get one trophy in Mighty Number no. 9. It's a pretty good adjective, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mighty a feature... Claire Extended Cut and Bombing Busters. Um, so I, Lauren Costixova, will be the actual gamer for this episode, um, which is pretty typical for us. And as is usual, I will be playing this game for the first time. Tony will be joining me as the show's resident game researcher and guiding me as necessary towards this episode's trophy goal. You see, here at Two Gamers, One Trophy, we don't just review games, we challenge ourselves, and this episode is no different. Like every game we play, Lauren will be working to achieve us. At a 13.33% rare rating, it is uh, achievable, but potentially not one you would hazard uh, upon without the guidance. Alrighty. So we invite all of our live viewers, and also if you're watching this later on, uh, uh, Oh, yes. So join us in our Twitch chat or leave us a message later. And let us know if you're playing along with us or tell us your impressions of the game. And uh, you can catch us on YouTube. Um, leave comments there. Um, and you can like and subscribe and whatever. That nonsense. Anyway, no more delay. We'll start our gameplay now. Here we go. Now, before we started, you mentioned uh, immediately with the graphic art that this reminded you of Mega Man. Yeah. It definitely does. That, and not even, I, I hadn't even loaded the game. It was just like the screenshot image, you know, on the PS4 when you go to play the game. I was like, that looks like yeah. Mega Man. Technology yeah. in so you're coming at this with no, no backstory, no history, nothing. Yeah, I know nothing about this at all. So what's your backstory with Mega Man? Yeah, I have no history with Mega Man. I don't think I've ever played a Mega Man game. Wow, okay. All right, so I think the target audience for this um, were for people who played and loved Mega Man series. Mm -hmm. And as you're going to see, you know, it's, it's very much that classic Mega Man side-scrolling game. I mean, it's, it's designed to be reminiscent of that, and it's, yeah. it's no coincidence because the development team of this game came from the Mega Man series. Oh. Okay. Um, in fact, this game uh, was a Kickstarter game. Okay. Um, and it did very well. It was announced at the 2013 Penny Arcade Expo. Oh. Kickstarted. It met the minimum funding goal only two days after the creation of the campaign. And uh, it was then scheduled to be released two years later in April of 2015. Professor! Uh, it's considered to be the spiritual successor to Mega Man, but not canon, not the same universe. Right, okay. 
Huh. Yeah. The development team is known as Comcept, um, and uh, they just are from ex Capcom staff, and Capcom, of course, is from the Mega Man series. Right. Yes, sir. Publisher is Deep Silver, which was acquired last month by THQ Nordic, um, potentially because of the failure, commercial failure of this game. <laughs> and they were this game was released eventually on June 21st, 2016, on the PS4, PS3, Wii U, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and all Windows platforms. Wow, so it came out for everything. It did, which I bring up because... Once it again, is one of the excuses the development team gave for why this game did not live up to expectations. They claimed that developing it for all the platforms simultaneously uh, made things considerably more difficult for them. Sure, well probably also more expensive on the front end, right? Like, yeah. I mean, like I said, they met their original Kickstarter goal. Then they yeah. had several, um, what do you call it, like boost goals? Like extended goals, goals, reach goals, stretch goals, stretch goals. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and they, they met those too, but you know, as you're gonna see, and I don't mean to be talking over, and I'm sure that our audio is not as high as we'd like it because we do want you to be able to hear us. But um, the voice acting, the technical direction, the art, the story it has all panned. I mean, there is very little that is critically loved about the game. Um, but you know, I don't want to completely tell you, you know, this is how you're gonna feel because maybe you'll love it. You don't have a Mega Man experience, so right. you're coming into this entire genre new. Yeah, I mean, for me, like for my untrained eye, this looks fine. Like the, the art looks okay. Like it looks like the type of game it's meant to be, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it's a throwback game. Yeah. I don't think that anyone's expectation was that this was going to utilize the entirety of any of the next gen or, um, you know, high-end computing needs. It wasn't going to have high-end graphics. It wasn't going to have, you know, gameplay that was so unfamiliar from what was being done and this uh -oh. S SNES. Security bot. Right. And it's out of control, unlike all the others. Beck, there's no other way. You'll need to fight your way through. I don't like so that I as we often skip through the dialogue. Yeah. Um, you can skip dialogue uh, by hitting the select button, but oh. it skips the entire scene. Oh. So I can't just, like, speed through it? No. Huh. It's one of those little quality of life things that, to you, as a, as a playtester, yeah. would be, you know, an obvious thing. Like, well, why right. can't I do this? But... No, they're not available. So this is also a little unusual. I, I want you to talk me through the game mechanics right off the bat. What do you think you should be doing to increase points? Uh, explain to me what the HUD is because okay. um, there's a chance you may not understand because of bad development and bad explanations. So, so give, give a shot. Okay, so from what... Okay, so, you know, I'll just like to point out that the jump button is actually jump X. Sometimes our games don't have that, and it's annoying, but anyway, so, so, I don't, so, okay, I'm shooting these guys until they're disabled, and then I'm running through them, which I don't understand what that, like, what I'm gaining by doing that, and right. then my health bar is at the top, you'd think that by doing that, I don't know what this percentage is that I'm gaining that it's, it's telling me about, um, yeah. uh, or what the number two above my life bar means. And yeah, I don't know any of that. Okay, so the game does not overtly explain uh, anything. It, 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 there's a, a small dialogue option in which he explains that there is an energy called Cell, X-E-L, yeah. that you seem to be collecting as you're dashing into these enemies. Uh huh. You can kill the enemies just by shooting them. I mean, if you keep shooting at them, they will Oh, die. they do die but eventually. The, yeah. The game is encouraging you to do the dash mechanic, and the reason that it's doing that is because as you dash through an enemy and get uh -huh. a 100% cell absorption, uh -huh. which means that you don't delay, you don't let him hit you, and okay. you just you weaken him and then dash through him as soon as you can, Yeah. you will gain power-ups. 
Okay. Um, power-ups come in the terms of uh, increased weapon capacity, the ability to lose lost life, uh, faster speed. Um, they're represented by little sort of circular icons underneath your character's health. Oh, yeah, I see that. Currently, you have a blue, yeah. which means you can regenerate health. Oh, okay. Um, you don't regain your HP by any mechanic. You can find a health pack. Yeah, okay. In fact, I think you're about to come across one Oof. right now. Bring it so on. If you restart, you might come across one. Um, the two represents the number of lives you have. Okay. Oof. And if you chain multiple 100%, your score will increase exponentially. Um, How do I use my, my boosty thing, my power up thing? The ugh. it's automatic. So, so I can't just say, "Hey, I want to regain my health now." Um, I don't Cause believe I just, so. Because I just died. I couldn't figure out how to actually do it. If anybody watching knows how to do that, please let us know because. Yes. That would be helpful. Because I had my power up and you said it was to regain health, right? But it went away when I died. Yeah. Like, you'd think that if that was the power up, you'd, they'd let me use it somehow. Yeah. Uh. I don't mind that the storyline is, is exceedingly simple. You know, robots going on a rampage, Somebody's obviously sabotaged. Bring it on. Potentially, there's a there's a corporate espionage element. That's okay. fine. I'm here to play Mega Man, you know. Uh, yeah. Maybe you feel differently. Bring it no, on. I don't feel. I don't even know what the plot is at this point. Like I don't even. That's more like but to have both a non-existent plot or a terrible plot, and to not have refined mechanics on, on a Mega Man clone, mm -hmm. it's pretty inexcusable on my personal. Okay, I just... okay. Okay. <laughs> so, this is the tutorial level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see how great I'm doing. <laughs> doesn't do a great job at explaining much of anything. Yeah. And it, it's not like... we've talked about this. Because we play a lot of tutorial levels. Yeah. And sure they do. don't need to sit down and explain it to us. They don't need to say, in text, here's what you have to do. Yeah. But your game, damn well better, show us in a, a level design how to do something. Yeah. If you want to explain chaining, then you need to make it so that you're forced to chain guys, you know? You yeah. need to explain how to use your health. You need to explain what the HUD is in a way that, I don't know, either tell us outright or, or show it to us. Yeah. And this game does neither. I definitely spent more time researching this game than playing it. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't because I didn't play it, I played it. Um, it's just that it felt like, what am I not learning naturally? And that's not a problem that I typically have, and this game yeah. definitely fails at that point. Are you kidding me? I just died because of that? Oh my goodness. Oi! The game also rewards you for doing certain um, hidden objectives. You, you kind of uh, dashed into three of those guys at one time. Mm -hmm. And so Professor. it gave you a good... There are these little hidden objectives within the game. Different ways to get past obstacles, different ways to be bosses. Um, there are a finite yeah. number in the game. So it's a little bit of a, a collect-a-thon to get them all. Um, I only bring it up because it'll be important later, so I just okay. wanted to plant that seed now. Okay. Furthermore, you can change the number of lives that you start out with. Oh, and that's good. And I ended up maxing it at nine because I, two was I was failing. I was failing so hard. Really? So, yeah. Um, if you get frustrated or if you get the option, I might up that to nine. And you may have to restart the level, so I'm, I'm not sure. Oh. Well, I'll wait then. Does it give you the option if you keep dying a lot to like start that to like change that? Um. Or is it something you just have to go in and do? You're on your own. I think uh -oh. you have to do it yourself, and you may have to do it in the, in the main title screen. Ah. 
You also get the option to do it after this tutorial level, but okay. that doesn't mean you have to get through the tutorial level. Right, right, right. Two lives. Professor, I... I mean... I'll do it. I feel like this, much like the game we played last week, or two weeks ago, I mean, Bloodborne, is a lot about, like, timing and figuring out patterns and, like, just paying attention, which is, are not things that I'm great at. Yeah. This game subscribes to the classic Nintendo difficulty, which Nintendo games, the originals, mm -hmm. padded their game length by having notoriously difficult levels right. so that you were discouraged from renting a game or if you did rent a game you had the urge to buy it because you couldn't get through the game in one sitting you had to really memorize mechanics you had to you know be completely fluid in what you played as a, as a means for the developers to say oh, our game takes this long to play even if you know it wasn't because of a uh, uh, there were a lot of levels or the story was really long it was just that it was difficult to play that's huh. Mega Man is trying to. I'm sorry, Mega Man. Not Mega Man. Mighty Number Nine. Not is Mega Man. Mega Man clone. Um, and, and that's a tough line. Right. And so Bloodborne, while it's difficult, I don't think that anyone would argue that these are the same type of difficulty. I think that Bloodborne oh, yeah. is difficult in the sense that. You know, you're learning how to do something and you get a sense of reward. Mm -hmm. Here, I feel more like it's, uh, okay, I just need to remember to watch out not to dash into this guy or dash into that guy. Right. It's hard to explain why they're different, but Bloodborne definitely feels better when you accomplish something. Well, also just because, like, uh, yeah, if I wish I had actually accomplished something in that game, to be honest, um, other than mm -hmm. getting frustrated, but, um... I, I, I should go back and try that again, just because, yeah, but I get what you're saying, like, yeah. here it's like, oh, yeah, there's just different types of, of frustration, yeah. I guess, is what, yeah, so, um, you do have one more mechanic that the game, uh, will never tell you. Which is, if you hold the R1 or R2 trigger button, I can't remember which, and you jump and or shoot, mm -hmm. you will kind of, uh, it's hard to explain, you should give it a try. You kind of shoot backwards or shoot forwards while jumping. So hold R, ooh, hold R2 and shoot? Hold on. Yeah, and if that doesn't work, try R1, because I can't remember which button that is. Okay. It must be R2. Oh, I see. So it, you like, ju I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a... Yeah. It's weird that they don't like explain um, it to you. Yeah, and also, as you've learned, there's no way to shoot up diagonally. Yeah. Um, you know, which of course is on purpose, but there were many times that I felt like I wish I could do that, and I don't think that that, that desire to do it is anything the developers intended. <laughs> you know, because it feels like a missing feature, it doesn't yeah. feel like a challenge. Yeah, you should be able to shoot diagonally. Oh, That's what I mean. upward, diagonally upward. That's what I mean. So I'm sure you're dying to know the story. So to help with that, I'm gonna read to you the official PlayStation description of the game. Okay. They say that you play as Beck, the ninth in a line of powerful robots and the only one immune to a mysterious virus that has caused mechanized creatures the world over to go berserk. Run, jump, blast, and transform your way through 12 challenging stages 
using abilities stolen from your enemies to take down your fellow mighty number robots and confront the final evil that threatens the planet. Yep. Okay. Uh, the game does have uh, high scores, leaderboard rankings. The game does jump an S to an F system on how well you complete a mission. There is a boss rush mode, mini missions, challenges. There's a toggable 8-bit soundtrack, extra difficulty modes, and you can play missions online with a friend. Um, but you have to get to a certain point before you unlock that. Great. So first of all, the name is Beck. How do we feel about Beck as the name of a protagonist robot? Uh, Beck? I mean, I guess it's okay. I, I, feel I would less expect it to be. I feel. Yeah, yeah. What, how do you Something feel? more robotic? Or, yeah. So, you know, programming language, scientific? Yeah. And also, of course, I think of the musician. Yeah. And I also want to point out the, the plot, which is that a virus is infecting all of the mechanized creatures of the world. Uh-huh. I just would have preferred to, to hear computer virus. Virus makes it seem biological. And I, I, I know oh, that's yeah. nitpicking, but Beck does seem to be humanoid. So it just would, it, it would be nice to have that distinction called out. That's all I'm saying. Right, because he's not fully a robot. So the fact that... Right. They didn't specify that it's like a robot virus. Well, it's not a virus that it's a robot. It's a <laughs> this virus is a robot. Right, right. Right. The lab is just ahead. Sonda. Sonda, are you still there? The purple floor you see is an insta kill floor. Um a frustrating element that I found as I played later levels was that sometimes you're supposed to make jumps uh, blind, down, and your character falls. And there are times when he'll fall right into a pit. And the oh. game is requiring a rote memorization of where those purple floors are uh -huh. in order to get past. And I hate that. And I'll go into a little bit why later, but the fact that the game just requires you to die in order to progress is pretty shitty. Yeah, that's kind of dumb. Mm. How do I kill you? Oh. So, the game doesn't do a good job explaining this either. Yeah. Um, you unlock his weakness. Yeah, perfect. And then you slide into him. If you don't slide into him while he's weak, he'll slowly regain his health. Yeah, I, I saw that. I couldn't figure out what was making him regain his health, but I saw that he was regaining it, and I was really annoyed. That's more like it. Yeah. What was that? All right. I got this. Maybe. So that guy, the robot who gives you those items, as you continually die, the items it gives you will be better and better. Okay. I like that feature. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice thing. It's like, you're doing terribly here, take this. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, I like that it's it's Oops. responsive to the way you're playing. I, I yeah. think that's nice. I think that board games should do that. So uh, give it, you know, a kudos where you need to. How do I, uh, do I, am I, am I, uh, whatever. What? What? I bet you can make a good turd? What? Do you see this comment, Tony? What does that mean to me? I think it's a compliment. Maybe you would make a good turd. <laughs> Maybe I would. I don't know. Can you clarify? <laughs> Ah. 
gonna die. Yep, died. Two more chances. <sighs> That's more like it. What was that? Must stop it before he destroys the entire laboratory. Uh, are you hearing the voice acting, or is it too loud? Yeah, I can hear it. Any question? Um, I think it's over the top. I think it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, maybe that's like the type of game that maybe these games have that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the game's cartoony, so you yeah. Can give it his breath to, to be that way, but it is not skippable, which you mentioned before. Yeah. And so it comes off a little bit more annoying than I think they intended to. Right. comes at me like that, how am I supposed to avoid it? Well, when it turns purple, you should dash into it. No, 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 that much I know, but like, it, when it da when it comes, when it like gets into- You can also wait until it dashes into you to run into it, but that's a bit of a balancing act because if you wait too long, his health will go up. So. Yeah. Oops. Oh man. Man, he was so close. I mean... You're doing good, you're doing better. Yeah, I figured it out a little bit. Oh, he gives me three like things. Like, look, you're so that? bad at this. Have all these stuff. A demolition unit. Have all of these things. Did it to get down there? Take them all. Back, quickly. You must stop it before it destroys the entire laboratory. Round digger. See, he wasn't purple when he rushed at me that time, so I think that's... I think I just have to, like, take that hit. Um, maybe you can jump over and dash? Oh, yeah, maybe. Oops. Look at me go! There. Yeah. Yeah. So that's for, for receiving um, 10,000 or more points. Do the points get me Definitely. anything? Sonda, are you alright? Trophies? <laughs> I mean, in, also, in game leaderboard wise. rankings. Uh, oh, leaderboard no. rankings. But there's no, like, I can't, like, unlock yeah. things yeah. with them. I believe they might be suffering from this no, no. Robot not like in game currency. It's like every so we aren't we are not doing a one and done, so you still need to keep right. playing. But you need to keep playing. Here's here's the kicker. Maybe he can send you help. must. Here's the kicker. I need you to tell me when you're ready to go for the I'm trophy sorry, goal. Sweet because there's no way you can get it until I suggest oh, how to do it. So it's not something I would just unlock through gameplay like normal. Hmm. I mean I if it's possible, but oh. I don't After think all, it's gonna happen. Oh, so to it, okay. Well. All right, gotcha. I'll let you know worse. when I'm ready. Okay. Um. So use this time to explore the different worlds. Yeah. The whole, um, the majority of the world is very difficult. Uh huh. Um, but I have played through them enough to know how, in theory, to beat them. Okay. <laughs> We can isolate the oh, I just got a notification that my it's internet connection shot, quality is currently hope. not sufficient to broadcast gameplay. Again. Oh, no. So, I don't yeah. know if you can hear me Let's or still see me out there in internet land. They probably can hear you but not see you, but we've gotten the video stream back before, so we, yes. will, we will continue on, and you will have to do your best to describe what's happening. Okay, I'll try. Really, I will. 
um, just start weeping. Oh, it's so glorious. In extra mode is here. Everything has changed. It is beautiful. Oh the gosh, graphics are 4K. Game is gorgeous. The audio, it's, um, a, it's a live orchestra. New content in extra <laughs> mode is here. What okay, so I'm looking at a map of uh, the United States, and there's all these places that I can go to, and they're all numbered. So I'm assuming that these are the previous robots. Because I'm number nine, and these are numbered, right. like, one, okay. Exactly, they're the other mighty numbers. Yeah. I did not notice before that it was the U.S. So, is this supposed to take place in some alternate version of, of our planet? That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. If I were developing this game, I would not have bothered to try and suggest this is on Earth. I would have just made it a generic continent, and... and that's interesting. That's it's interesting. I'm just trying to think of what the reasoning behind that is. Yeah, I don't know. Could not tell you. Because you, you don't really see other humans. I mean, you see them in the hub, but you know, you're you're mostly fighting one added. robot Press archetype after progresses. another. I just grab yeah, I don't. Mm. Oh, wait. I just... so, so for those who can't see, which is everybody. Yeah. Um. Uh. There are three options in the hub. The center is the map that Lauren was describing. The left-hand side is uh, an options I menu in which you yeah. can change to nine lives if you like. Which I just did, the right by the way. Is. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> You're going to need it. <laughs> On the right-hand side uh, are challenge modes and leaderboards. Yeah. Um, the challenge boards are interesting. If you've played Metal Gear Solid 2 for the PlayStation, and or the PS3 remake or, or remaster. Um, it's essentially a collection of VR missions that hinder one ability or another, put a time limit on there, or you know an objective, and then you go for it. They're fun, I say tentatively. You know, definitely feel free to jump into one if you like, but you're not progressing the story in any way. Okay, I'm actually gonna play the level that is called Mighty Number One. Ah, that's actually the enemy. I believe the name of the level is something Right. That's what I figured. Wait, that's the oil rig, right? The oil rig. Gotcha. Something rig. So, which is also common for the Mega Man series, you get to choose what boss you fight. So, this is very much in um, line with how the Mega Man games worked as a whole, as a template. You would have your different bosses. They would typically be things like Iceman, Fireman, Electric Man, Wind Man, whatever. Uh -huh. And as you fight one, you collect uh, their weapon. And you can switch freely between any weapons you collected. And so, after many years of playing these games and figuring it out, you know, gamers would figure out, oh, here is the best optimized path. You fight Fireman first so that you can easily beat Iceman. Oh, so you can easily beat, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know if this game has an optimized path. I'm sure it does. Uh -huh. I didn't bother it because honestly, I don't think we're gonna get far enough Oops. for it to matter. Excuse me. Um, but just, I guess, keep that in mind that in theory, you could get a firepower that could, in theory, help you on a level that fire is useful. Sure. Okay, so now I'm now, on this level. Have... What? Yeah. No. Where there's um, a lot of like things that are uh, on fire, as Tony was saying. There's a lot of fire in this level, and um, it's an oil rig, so there's like slippery floors and stuff, and like there's a lot of platforming going on, which I'm okay at, I suppose. Um, but ooh, yeah. there's also just dudes to go. shoot and slide through. So do you think do you think Osha would be okay with this rig or? Um yeah, Osha would probably have some problems, especially with all of the oil that's everywhere on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Though you know maybe not a lot of human workers because it does seem to be um, mostly a robot yeah, run that's operation. Yeah, that's probably fair. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Now, you said already that you have no real experience with Mega Man, but is right. that from choice or because you didn't really have access to the Mega Man? I didn't really have access to it. Have. I don't... What were they on? Like, were they on a Sega? Oop. Um, Super Nintendo, Nintendo. Oh. Yeah, we, I didn't have those growing Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, as there are these these classic games that I think um, people of our age uh, played, if you were gamers throughout your whole life, you know, we're talking Mario, we're talking Zelda, we're talking um, uh, Samus, Metroid, um, and then yeah. I think we're talking Mega Man, you know, mm -hmm. unless you happen to be a Sega person, then you're talking more Sonic, maybe, Sonic, or Jim, yeah. and yeah. uh, what else is Sega, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know. I never really had experience with Sega until the Dreamcast, really. Yeah. But, you know, the thing with Sega and the Sega IP, uh, Sonic particularly, you know, these games uh, were classics. They uh, had a rise in popularity as they hit maybe their second and third game. And then they became plagued with this problem where they never really advanced in a way that made sense. Mario kept raising the stakes, they kept adapting technology, and technology adapted to Mario. But with Sega, it felt like they either did the same thing, and it was stagnant, mm -hmm. or they took leaps that were bold, but did not work. Like, Sega, uh, Sonic turned into an RPG, kind yeah. of, at one point, and then he was like dating a human, it, oh. it got weird. Yeah, and, and Mega Man, didn't take any risks. Mega Man just stayed Mega Man. One through like nine. It just was the same formula. And you know, yeah. it, it altered little things, but I think that Mega Man never evolved. And okay. Capcom, it not only is not great at this IP, but it, it it's not handled a lot of their IP as well. You think of Dead Rising, you think of so many properties that Capcom has lost. They just have never been able to capitalize on what you know, are these amazing things, which is why, you know, this game was kickstarted, it's why these are ex-Capcom employees trying to, to remake this. Hmm. And uh, despite this game not doing well, I think Capcom was motivated to try and bring back the proper Mega Man license because we had a Mega Man anniversary that came out in 20, late 2017 or early 2018, which is a collection of all the Mega Mans from modern generations. As well as a Mega Man 11 coming out. Oh, wow. Bring it on. So. 11. Oof. Nice. And we have video back. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, and uh, things have seemed really calm. You seem to be getting rained down fire, and fire uh, pillars. Yeah, I'm stuck keeping between you them. limited space. Yeah, so yeah. things are going well for you. Yep. Real great. Real, real great. Woo. But still with nine lives. Oh yeah, I lost one earlier and I got it back. Oh, I'm like... Woo. I died. <laughs> uh -oh. Ouch. So while you're um, going through this again, mm -hmm. I should point out that the trophy we are going for is 13.33% rare and what that means is is that we go to a website called psnprofiles.com we pull information from the site that aggregates trophy hunters data mm -hmm. and it gives us an estimate of how difficult it could be is, or at least how many individuals that allow themselves to be registered on the site um, how many have collected this trophy so that's not the only trophy in the game you know of course, this game right. has a platinum trophy, it has 5 gold, 9 silver, 16 bronze, 4 total of 1,140 points, if you care about that kind of thing. I will point out that the platinum trophy is 1.14% rarity. Oh, Jesus. Really? 1%? people have it yep and you know yeah from research it seems to be a combination it's not an easy it's not easy to, to get that but also okay. this game is not fun enough to try 
I mean, from what I'm seeing, there's probably a little bit of both of those things going on. Yeah. Oops. So we have lost video again. Oh no. Yeah, yeah I we're um, like I think the last time we spoke about my internet connection, I had told you that they're like it's DSL, I guess, and it's like old. And Yeah. And we're get we're supposedly getting upgrade uh upgrades soon. Like equipment that will help boost and maintain our signal. Um, but yeah. until then, we just sort of have to deal with whatever is happening here, so... I apologize, yeah. guys. Mm. So, speaking of crashing technology, I'm going to give you a little bit of gossip about this game. Oh. So, I mentioned it was kickstarted. I mentioned yeah. that it was delayed. Oh, it was? Fans were upset before this game came out. During its kickstarting, during the development cycle, and the game had been delayed already a couple of times. Uh, Concept, the developer of this game, announced the decision to kickstart another project called okay. Red Ash, the Indelible Legend. And this, combined with a lack of communication about what was happening with Mighty Number no. 9, caused uh, <laughs> an uproar about what had happened to the money. Were they using me to fund this game instead of that one? Right. You know, why are they focusing on two projects when you delay this one? And it did not do well for the pre-sales for the impression of this game coming out. Hmm. You know, when the game did finally release, um, there were some statements made by the developers, and. Uh, Inafune, I believe is his last name, uh, through a translator, he said the following during a Twitch live stream of the game. He said, you know, I want to word this in a way to explain Bring some of the issues like that come with trying to make a game of this size on multiple platforms. I'm kind of loath to say this because it's going to sound like an excuse and I don't want to make any excuses. I own all the problems that came with this game and if you want to hold insults at me, it's totally my fault. I'm the key creator, I will own that responsibility. In this case, it was due to the base game and all the ports at the same time. Being a huge amount of work, more than they actually estimated. Definitely, when they looked at the project, they were wrong about a lot of things. They underestimated how much work, time, and money was All these things created a huge amount of pressure. Here we go. Hmm. So. That's more like it. I don't understand how I'm meant um, to get past this part. Oh, you cannot. Um, you can't describe, see me. Describe. Yeah, yeah. I'm, there's just these two platforms that fall out from under me, and but I have to jump up. But there's this fire thing. But like I can't like jump and because the the platform that I'm jumping to is higher than. Mm -hmm. And you're you're jumping and dashing. Yeah. Hmm. But like the platform is higher up. It it it. I can't jump that high. Like, my dash yeah, doesn't go that high. Point. Yeah. Huh. Um, most of the platforms that I felt I wasn't going to hit, I was able to hit through jumping and multiple dashing just over and over again. Yeah. But it didn't increase your height. So but if you really are there's starting also, like, this position, spinny fire thing that I have to, like, time it to. You know what I mean? Ooh. And I keep hitting it, so I don't know, like... Yeah, I can't see it, so I actually yeah. don't know how to help you. <laughs> and, you know, I can't shoot uh, diagonally upwards. So, like... You know, the, the spinny fire guy is up higher than my gun can reach. Um... Yeah, there's no way to shoot. That's interesting. I'm trying to look up a walkthrough of the level. Just I mean, like, I I'm sure it's just running and jumping and the and like dashing through the through the guy, but like I don't I can't figure out the timing of it. Timing of this is dumb. 
Ugh. I'm just gonna die. Oh, okay. Um, so you shot your way over. At the top, you're seeing the the purple, right? What? You're seeing kind of the purple danger floors all around you. I don't know what you're talking about. Purple danger Is floors. Is the floor on fire? No. Huh. I just, I don't, I can, I see what I'm meant to do, I just can't figure out the timing of it. And I keep running into this, like, spinny guy. Yeah, I don't know. And, like, the, like, the robot keeps giving me, like, power-ups, but the power-ups don't help if I'm, like, falling through the floor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I've had that problem, too, where I'm dying at a, at a jump, and it's, like, not helpful, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, there's not much more um, to the game other than these elements. I mean, there's no bo that better way I can see you. Oh, okay. It looks like you're now fighting a boss. Oh, I I defeated that part. All right, you you've got a delay, I guess. Look at, you. Look at that confidence. Are you still back at the ball? Cause it's, no. I've been. Are you caught up? Not, no, we're not. It doesn't. We're not live again. Uh oh. Hmm. Um. I was gonna say that there's no um, there's no voice actors of note. Um, other than to say this game did not turn out the way they expected. It certainly was not a proper extension of the Mega Man franchise. It, it may be motivated Capcom, like I said, but it's just not a game that's well liked. Um, you know, the fact that you're stuck like this mm -hmm. is another indication that the game doesn't do a very good job of indicating how to get from one thing to another. Right, and like, yeah, it's nice that the little robot -y dude wants to give me power-ups, but that literally doesn't help me when the problem is I can't jump from one side of the wall to the other. Like, yeah. or like, I don't know what I meant to be doing to get over there. Like, here, have yeah. a more powerful gun for 30 seconds. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's a, a highway level, which you could have chosen. You can choose any of these levels. Yeah. Um, that at one point, you hit your checkpoint, and you jump on a car, and the car just sort of rotates to the right of the screen slowly mm -hmm. as the level on the left hand side gets shorter and shorter so the game is forcing you to keep moving forward uh, at a certain pace right but because the cars are moving and there are enemies you know not only do the jumps need to be timed in a certain way but there's also a sort of random element of you know I have to make sure this enemy doesn't knock me back I have to kill it first and the robot appears at the beginning of that of that area and it is so frustrating to restart have the robot give you whatever useless item mm -hmm. and then continually die maybe two minutes in because you have to wait for the car to move you and then you right. get there and then you die and then you start back two minutes earlier and it's not fun <laughs> it's just it's not fun to feel like okay but I feel like I'm being punished and I'm not learning anything because there's mm -hmm. so much time that takes place between the reload 
and it feels like this effing robot is taunting me by giving me a power up that I don't need. Right. All set. Right, and like as and... opposed to a. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please, you go ahead. I was just gonna say while you were talking, I was like googling walkthroughs for this part. But it's all the walkthroughs that I see are just like how to defeat the bosses and they don't tell you anything about the actual levels other than like, yeah, this level's easy if you use your jump dash all the time. And it's like, well, okay, I understand that, but can you maybe like show me a clip of like this particular part? <laughs> Cause like, I don't right. get it. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, you know, this isn't the only difficult platforming game out there, but it is certainly one of the worst ones. Let's let's talk a little bit about Celeste. Do you know about this game? No. It's an indie title. It released last month, I believe, and it received a perfect rating on at least IGN and I believe some other review sites. Okay. And this game is a platforming game. The animation is simple. Uh, Storyline is, is is good. It's tight, but it's more about the, the playing the the gameplay component is quote-unquote room to room even though you're climbing a mountain each sort of it's a block segment it's roomed and you climb the mountain and you're, you're jumping you're grabbing you're you know it's all platforming mm -hmm. and it's difficult it's very difficult but when you die they don't punish you you immediately no loading screen you're immediately back to being in the room and each room can be completed in under 30 seconds so while it may be very difficult you know, you get past these rooms quickly enough that you get a sense of accomplishment. Careful mm -hmm. back. You're not penalized, and you, you always feel like you're progressing. As opposed to this game, especially if you're playing with the suggested two or three lives. I mean, it is forcing you back to the beginning of checkpoints, which sometimes yeah. go pretty far back. Uh -huh. Or it kicks you out of the level. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that Mega Man can also be punishing. I know that Mega Man, if you lose all your lives, you're done. You know, the game restarts, start again with all of the levels. And this game, if you complete a level, you know, you, you maintain that level. But, you know, we've moved away from that system because modern day gamers, they don't like that repetitiveness. We don't have that free time. It's not yeah. for children necessarily. You know, it needs to be so that we can pop in and pop out of games. Right. Otherwise, why would we waste our time? Yeah. So we do see that you're in the water level. We regained. Um, yeah, I quit out of the fire one because I was just so frustrated by it. Yeah, I hear you. I was mentioning earlier about blind drops, and this is the level with the blind drops. Yeah. In fact, I would be surprised if you don't die just yeah. out of like, oh, okay, there's a drop in there. So now, I saw you died. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to restart before the drop. And you're gonna have to memorize where that drop is, yeah. where you need to be facing, and remember to dash at the right time. It took me maybe six times before I finally like remembered and got it right. And it just felt like, but why? What is the why? Why? This isn't yeah. fun. It's not fun to not know what's coming. Yeah. Oh. Ugh. Yep. Good. Ugh. Close. That was, that was good though. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the game rewards you if you do a perfect drop, um, with a little like a perfect run. It says. Great. Cause that's what yeah. I care about. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, you'll you'll use up some portion of your lives. And then when it gets to the boss, you have no time to really like learn how a boss battle goes because you spend all your time not dying on the freaking. I just dislike. Yeah. You did excellent, by the way. Good job. Thanks. Hey. Wow. I just yawned, which is unusual. You yawned! <laughs> how do I... How do I? Um, yeah, I think you, you maybe dash, you jump and dash. Mm. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, just like if somebody could have just shown me a clip of like the timing of that spinny fire guy, like I'd have been all over it, you know, but like Yeah. I couldn't cuz you know, it's one of those guys that has the two like fire things attached to him and I'm just like, I oops. Yeah. I just couldn't figure it out, man. So I got frustrated and I left. I was like, bye, fire level. You've been fun. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> good, good luck with that oral refinery. It seems, yeah. seems like it's going to do real well. Good luck with your inspection. Ooh, I don't know. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a water slash ice level, which I think is hilarious because in video games, the levels that people hate the most are water yep. and ice levels. And I feel like they said, you know what? F it. We're going to lean into it. We're, we're just going to do both. Yeah, we're going to make this the worst level possible. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I don't know if we've had a long discussion about why people dislike water and ice levels. No, we it's haven't. Like to do with the mechanics. It has to do with the game will teach you a whole bunch of controls. It'll have you sort of muscle memorize how mechanics feel. Just the idea of running or jumping and you know how far your character goes, you know, how big of a bounce it, he makes or she makes. And these are all things that it takes time to get used to and you get a sense of, okay, I, I know if I can make this jump. You know, you learn these things. And then a water level or an ice level will say, "Fuck that! Fuck, yeah. fuck, fuck your memory!" Yeah. All these mechanics you just learned. Nope. <laughs> now your guy goes double the distance, or takes double the time to slow down, or underwater, you know, you have to learn a whole new set of controls. And it's frustrating because typically, it slows down the action. It's not like it changes the action in a fast, frenetic way. No. It it brings you to a crawl, a crawl that you can't control, and people hate it. But we keep seeing it. We keep seeing it, and I don't think it's done to any particular effect here. I mean, it just feels like, yeah, this is the thing that we don't like. Okay, thank you for feeling the obligation to put this in here. Yeah. Well, this ice part is really fucking obnoxious with the boss and yeah. like the. Yeah, because even if you could see where that ball is going, <laughs> yeah. you're still gonna have a hard time avoiding it. Yep. So, um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. At least I actually got to the boss on this level. On the last one, it was like, this level seemed much shorter than the last one, too. I know. It's not the final boss. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I, I said the same thing when I, I was like, yeah, I did it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Ignoring the fact that I don't even know what these robots are, like, what is the regular use of these robots? Yeah, like, what do they do? What's their are purpose? They causing... yeah, yeah, what's their purpose? I mean, they're supposed to make sense in this world, so what are right. they? Or for that fact, what are you? What's your purpose? Are you security? Are you... What are you? Yeah. Yeah, what's Beck's role in life? Like, Beck should have an existential crisis, because what the fuck does he do? Like, what is his purpose? And oh why isn't Beck affected? Did that cause this problem? What makes yeah. Beck so unique? I mean, oh I know, God. I know, we're going the cartoony route, but these are low-hanging fruit. So tell me how. <laughs> okay, when you're ready, you're gonna need to replay the first stage. Okay. It'll be easier now that you have nine lives. Uh huh. But essentially, I need you to get to the boss of the first stage. How do I get back to the first stage? I don't even know how to do that. You go back to your map. Uh huh. And then it will be the only one that has like oh, a, the... a green check. Yeah. I believe it says city. City. You the one I have a score on. Set. Okay. Okay. And what do I have to do? Okay. So play through the, the entire level until you get to the boss. Okay. Which is not a long level actually, especially if you're cutscene. Yeah. 
Do you remember when I said that each level and boss has a mechanic that if you do a certain thing, you something like you you slide through multiple enemies, or you do mm -hmm. it particularly quickly, or you get no damage, it'll give you a notification saying awesome or amazing or right. perfect run. But at the half hour mark, you hit the boss, and you you got one of them, and you didn't you didn't notice. Uh oh. And okay. why would you ask? But I was like, yeah. oh man, and then you died, and then you got the other one. But you uh, have to get them both in and the one same, light. Yeah. Did you just absorb the cells yeah. of a weakened robot and me? Oh so you, I know that you can do this because I've seen you do it. Just I've done both yeah. of them, just not at the same time. Yeah. yeah right, right. Ugh. But you know, we are going for the trophy. So, so why don't you give me some of your your beginning impressions of this game? Okay. Um, it's frustrating. Like, yeah. I I get that it's meant to like you know harken back to those days where like oh video games had this like difficult element because they wanted people to buy them and whatever whatever because you couldn't beat it if you rented it or you know whatever nonsense but like this seems like it's just like hard for no purpose like it's just purposefully like oh we're gonna make this as frustrating as possible and explain as little as possible about how to play this game while you're playing it yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not you know, like it's, it's not unfun. It's just that it gets frustrating very quickly because of the way that it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's here's the difference between Bloodborne. I think I've got it in my head. In Bloodborne, you can always see what you're doing wrong. Yeah. You can always say, "Okay, I zigged when I should have died." Right. And then you do that. And then if you die again, it's because you've done something different. Right? Yeah. And you really do get a sense that you're learning and that you're you're correcting your actions as you go. Mm -hmm. Here, it feels like, hey, make that jump and also don't get hit by that thing. Oh, right. you, you, did, you did it wrong. Oh, you did it wrong again. And it's not like you don't know. It's that, like, it's hard. It's hard to random. do, yeah. And it punishes you <laughs> temporally. It makes you redo all these actions to get to that point. It's it's very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. It's not untrue. It's like, Especially oh, I Especially because, can't... you know, in Bloodborne... Yeah. I was going to say there's so many different things, you know. Jump, or slash, down slash, back slash. You know, there's so many different variations. Right. Here, it's jump and shoot. You don't yeah. have any variation to what you're doing. No. I mean, imagine you were a Mega Man fan. You loved games that were so mechanically tight, and you've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and this is a game that is provided to you that you've paid for already, that you've kickstarted, you know, right. you've supported this, and they've kind of, in your mind, screwed you over, you've been delayed, they've taken your money and gone made a different game. To come and play this, I think you can understand why this game is just... Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Well, what I find interesting is, why is this game a PS Plus game? What made Sony reach out to Concept or Deep Silver or the remnants of those companies and mm -hmm. say, Hey, we'll give you this money and people will play your game. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know that Sony has an, an obligation uh, to, to fill out the number of PS3 titles, the number of PS4 titles, and this is a PS3 one. And the PS3 mm -hmm. is old. We only have a year left of them even having to worry about figuring out what titles to give us. Right. So, is this what it is? They're just bottom of the barrel? Okay. This one. Or I mean, maybe. That's, that there's... that's entirely possible. I mean, I haven't... To be honest, I have, I haven't been, tr oh. I haven't been tracking the PS3 releases aside from whatever we end up, you know, playing. Or, oh, I, I, I can dash. Hey, Lauren, you have a mechanic that will allow you to get over there. Um, <laughs> um, because I just let, you know, I think I've said to you, I don't have a PS3 anymore. So unless it's something we can crossplay or whatever, I can't actually play the PS3 game. So I haven't been. 
I've been adding them to my cart and like purchasing them or whatever, but I haven't actually been looking at what the titles are or anything, so I don't know, have the titles for PS3 been like just like the dregs? Have they just been like, oh well I guess this is here. I mean I, I, I do have a PS3. Yeah. But I have not booted it up to download some mm. of the PS pluses in a while. Yeah. I've actually gone through and I've looked at some of the old ones, but so many of them are cross play. But I feel like we're actually hitting a lot of the good ones because PS3 ones that are not crossplay are typically sort of the, eh, here's an old one that, you know, maybe you've heard of it. It's, nothing speaks out. And this is actually a crossplay one, which means the recent title is one that, you know, they made enough effort to, to develop it in a way that it's available on multiple platforms. So this should be a good game. And even though it's not, you know, I just really feel like, yeah, they're, they're trying their best with the PS3 titles. Yeah. I mean, and they've Hopefully been... Hopefully in the bitter end, they give us a good one. Yeah. Well, they've been releasing titles for the Come on. Um, PS3 for how long now? I mean, PS Plus has been a thing for a really long time. And, you know, I, I'd like to know overall how many titles Please. have been released for PS3 on PS Plus, just because... Okay, I did that really fast, and I didn't do any of the things. So you'll have to tell me what the things are. But you already beat the monster? Yeah. I can't even see it, because we lost the video. Oh, oh no. Right. <laughs> no, um, I'll do it again. You are it's alright. Since okay. June 2010. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going on eight years of this. Right, like... I can't imagine that there's a lot of like top of the line games that haven't been released for this for PS3. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe Especially they're just... they, they were giving us the good PS3 titles back when there wasn't a PS4. You know? Right. Exactly. And I feel like this game only came out 2 years ago, so you know, and they don't put they it feels like there's like a 2 year delay, right, between when a game will have, have been released and then when it's on PS Plus because I don't right. think we've had I think a lot of the games, yeah, two-ish, because like uh, Ratchet and Clank came out in April of 2016, right? And then like, you know, this game you said came out early 2016, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like they released them right away for PS Plus. So maybe we're yeah, just getting yeah. to the end of the the end of the line for whatever PS. Because really, like. Who's releasing games for PS3 that aren't already released on other platforms? Uh, right, are there, there's no, like, well, I'm sure exclusive. there's a few games. Yeah. Yeah. PS3 exclusive games. Yeah. But also, why can Beck yeah. absorb the cells? This and is that like a new like can other robots do that like i think it's what makes that special right and exactly maybe, maybe that's what makes maybe them immune yeah it's possible to go into it i mean yeah it's possible but oh i'm do they i do have they? not been able to complete any of the levels oh. i can't actually tell you really how the story even you couldn't beat any of them i couldn't beat a single one except for the, the, the tutorial that makes me feel so much better about not being able to do it. Because you're like the gamer, in my mind. Like, you're the guy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think a big part of it, too, not only uh, I'm also in the middle of time, right. it sounded so frustrating. Yeah. And I did. I jumped into a couple of levels. So like, well, surely one of these, uh, you know, maybe I'm going to be more familiar with. It'll just come more natural. Yeah. Each one had its own parts, and I'm like, oh, this is like... It's difficult just for difficulty's sake. It doesn't yeah. feel good to play this. Yeah. yeah, and part of that is because we can choose any world. Mm -hmm. There is no ramp up in difficulty, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that part of it, but it just, I don't know, the cost of entry is so high. So, because I'm worried that because I can't see. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you now what we need to do for the boss. Okay. Okay, so at one point the boss shoots out these sort of red hover missiles. Uh huh. Three of them, like they kind of hover for a second. Uh huh. Yeah. They come at you. 
When he shoots those, before they start coming at you, you need to destroy all three of them. Okay. So shoot them yeah. down as soon as you see them. Okay. And then the screen will give you an amazing or whatever. It'll say something. Uh huh. Then you know you've done that one. And then you need to shoot him down so that he's glowing the purple so that you can dash into him. Uh huh. But wait. When he dashes into you, dash into him while he's okay. purple. Now that may take some time because, as you know, the purple is limited. Yeah. He doesn't know what dash, you know. But when you, if you can time the two to happen at the same time, and you dash into him, and you know, his dash, you'll get a second one. And okay. The second you do both of them in one in one life, right? It will unlock the thing. Okay. So, explaining that to you actually brings me to a new segment that I would like to bring to the show, which I'm calling Trophy Yays and Trophy Yays. Okay. So, trophy hunters, I think, um, like a challenge to the trophy. They like to get a sense of accomplishment, for the most part. Some people just like to have a number of trophies. But for the most part, I think the trophy hunters like a challenge, mm -hmm. something that doesn't feel cheap, and also something that doesn't feel like it's not representative of the game. For example, a trophy that just says, push A seven billion times. Right. While doable has no relationship to the game is a grind. That's not mm -hmm. a good trophy. A trophy that makes you play the same game six times on all six difficulty levels, like play it on easy, play it on medium, play it on hard. That's bullshit. That's yeah. padding. That's yeah. another that's another type of nay. Mm -hmm. I've got more examples, but that's to give you an idea of the trophies that people don't typically like. Yeah. A good trophy is a trophy that highlights some element of your game that maybe you're concerned that somebody would see an Easter egg or uh, an incentive to, to get some of the collectibles, assuming it's not too grindy. Those are fine trophies. Mm -hmm. The one you're going for, the fine play opening boss, I think is a trophy yay. And the reason I think that is, is because the game clearly is trying to get you to understand that there, there are different ways that you can approach each level in mm -hmm. each boss. Different kind of expert techniques. And by offering a trophy for finding those different variations, I think is highlighting uh, a development design. And I think it's a trophy yet. I think that's great. I think that's, that's what they should be doing. Um, yeah, I do like the, the concept of the trophy. My um, only issue with it is that, like, like for me, I did find both of those elements, right? Accidentally. Right. In different lives. But you're right, I did find them. But... Right. Um, as is highlighted here... I didn't get that trophy, even though I did get both of those things. But, now I have to go back and play this again, and do those two things again, to get that trophy. So, like, yeah, I like yeah. it. Uh, you're right, it is It is good, because it, it does show you that you can beat these bosses in different ways there are different things that you can do but it also just does feel a bit grindy because it's like oh I already did this thing and now I have to go back and like do it again just to get that trophy element you know what I mean yeah 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 no I hear you and you know whenever I go for trophies in a game I will whenever I load up, load up a game I will look at the trophies first oh you look at them and first. I'll even okay. look up and I'll look up like a road map to understand, yeah. okay, these trophies are missable. Or if I want to try and do this in one playthrough, you know, here's here's the order to do it. And mm -hmm. I'm not into using guides, even video guides. If, you know, my time is limited, I, I do want to see what the game has to offer, but I don't want to go through and go, okay, I had to play this three times because I didn't know that you had to do this. I wasn't aware that there were these missable items. Right. I mean, that makes sense. I don't, I'm not, because I guess we have different mindsets about trophies, I don't usually look up what the trophies are until I start playing the game. And at that point, yeah. it's like, oh, actually, I could have gotten that one the first time I played this level, but now I have to go back. Yeah. So, I do want to bring up a trophy nay for this game as well. Okay. There is a trophy called Brave the Gauntlet. And this trophy, to give you an idea, is at 1.18% ultra rare. I think this is the trophy that, in particular, is holding people up from the platinum, and here's why. 
To get this trophy, you have to complete all the single player challenges. It sounds so bad, but when you look into the single player challenges, one of the challenges out of 50 or 60 challenges, uh -huh. one of them says, play through the game without dying. Without dying? Yes. Ugh. Is it doable? Yes. Yes, it's doable. You can turn off and restart, you know, it does save. You can get through the game without dying. But what a pain in the ass. Because the, the penalizing you have to do to yourself to learn a path, restart the game every time you die so that it doesn't save. I mean, why? What is this? Yeah. What, what is this? Yeah. The idea behind this is get so good at this game that you never die. I I I find that to be gross, and I give it a trophy nick. You at the boss? Yeah. And I know the things that I'm supposed to do. I just haven't been able to do them because he doesn't stay purple for long enough for me to. Like, you know, to like yeah. do the thing. Shit. Oh, and then I time it badly. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, I got that one. Ooh, I got it. I got fine play. Is that the one I'm supposed to be getting? You did the thing. I did it. Woot, I only woot, woot. I, I only got the one though. That's weird. Maybe you got the other one without realizing it. Maybe it didn't give me like an on-screen thing. Maybe it. I don't know. Yay! I got the. Well, trophy. you did the thing. Congratulations. Thank you. Even though viewers will not believe you because there was no video evidence. And if it comes down to court, I will not back you. <laughs> well, you can go even look at my trophy list. I guess. I guess it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Unless you do what some trophy hunters do and they pay somebody else to get the trophies for them. Oh, please. Do you think I really Terrible. care that much? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think you yeah, put I much really... stock in the trophy no. hunting scene. Mm -hmm. Well, so, it sucks that my video you... was out, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's back. Just in time for the score. A C. Yeah, I got a C. I got a B the last time I played it, but I didn't get any of the things, so... Well, the trophy's what matters. So, you've played the game. Yeah. You've gotten the trophy. It's yeah. time for a segment I'm calling, Is Lauren Harsher Than Metacritic? <laughs> Yeah. Here's how we play. First, you give me what you would rate this game out of 100 and mm -hmm. why. Then you tell me if you think your score will be higher or lower than the Metacritic average of game critics. Then I'll read to you the highest and lowest critic ratings without the numbers they were assigned. And finally, we'll reveal if you went higher or lower than the Metacritic rating. Okay. Arn, are you ready? To yeah, I guess I'm ready. What was the first step? All I right. give you what I what I would rate it. That's right, zero to a hundred, and why? Um, I give it a sixty-eight. Because oh. it was just really a frustrating, 68. and like, you know, it didn't really tell me much, and it wasn't that fun to play after we. I hadn't even played it an hour, and I was like, I'm over this game. So yeah, a sixty-eight. Do you think you'll come back to it? No. Yeah. I mean, even if you had all the free time in the world. Even if, like, someone paid me to play this game. <laughs> so you're not going to get the trophies for me is what you're saying. No, no, don't pay me to get your trophies because you'll never get your trophies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do you think you're going to go higher or lower than the Metacritic average? Lower. 
Lower. All right. So we have a 60 and we have lower. Let's see. I'm going to read no, to you. No, I said 68. 68. Yeah. And lower. Yeah. I, miss, I misheard. Okay, 68. So, game over online. Ted of Mighty Number no. Nine. It isn't perfect. It is something that anyone who grew up loving any kind of Mega Man game should check out. Game <laughs> Age said. That's a... Good lord. It's not, a, it's not a good review, is it? Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's pretty, not glowing. You know, it's like... not glowing by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> if you like the Mega Man games, sure. Look at this one. What? Gaming Age. Gaming Age says, Good lord. So far, I think this was my Tony Hawk of 2016, despite me being slightly more generous. I guess Gaming Age was not a Tony Hawk fan. I was gonna say, I don't understand the, th okay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, drum roll, here we go. Metacritic said 52. Which oh, I went higher. Went higher than Metacritic. Wow. You were more generous. I am a giving person, Tony. <laughs> you are. You know, I wonder though, if you were paid, imagine a world in which you're paid to review these games. And you were required to play a certain percentage of a game to be able to give it a fair rating. Sure. I imagine that some of these people were forced to continue playing this game and maybe were like, ugh, lower, lower. Right. Right, that's possible because if I had to play like a certain percentage of this game in order to have been considered like played the game for review purposes, mm -hmm. like, oh, you have to play like whatever percentage. By the time I got to that percentage, I would probably want to throw my controller, my TV, and my PS4 out the window. Or <laughs> just be like, sorry, I'm over this. <laughs> I mean, you did nope out at one point. You're like, I know we've only been doing this for an hour, but I'm calling it. Yeah. You, put your, you slammed your hand on the mat. You wanted, wanted like, to be done. I, the buzzer that was next to me, I was like, buzz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also have to notate here that Tony is the one that yawned. And 40 minutes in. Just want to notate that for future <laughs> reference. And finally, it's time for the last segment of the show. Is it worth downloading? Here's some data to keep in mind before we give our final judgment. Howlongtobeat.com. The main story should take you about five hours, depending on your skill level. To do all of the extra elements, you're looking at seven and a half hours, depending on your skill level. And to complete all the trophies, they're suggesting 12 hours on your skill level. At a disk size of 3.38 gigabytes and a regular price of 19.99, is Mighty Number no. Nine worth downloading? Lauren, what do we think? Oi. Um. Well, as long as you keep in mind the fact that it's going to take you much longer than whatever those numbers were, um, and you have free time that you're willing to spend on a game that's going to frustrate the hell out of you, sure, go ahead and download it. Like. I'm not gonna stop you. I don't really. I mean, if you want, if you're in, if you're a glutton for punishment, put this game in your queue. Like, go for it. No, um. I would say if you are glutton for punishment, though, March already gave us a much better title for that, and that's Bloodborne. Oh yeah. Yeah, play I Bloodborne. I mean, if you if, <laughs> if nostalgia is really your thing, nostalgia and specifically nostalgia and difficulty. Yeah. Then, okay, I guess Mega Man. But, yeah. You know, Mighty Number no. Nine. You seem to be at least <laughs> enjoying Bloodborne. Bloodborne was fun because like, it was more my type of game. It was the type of game where you mm -hmm. can like, where you feel like you're making progress even if you're not actually doing anything. Like, oh, I figured out, like, I can't go this way while that guy's looking at me. Like, okay, let me try it this way. Here it's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong, so I don't know how to adjust. And that's not fun. Yeah. 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 I mean, I will give it that we're looking at a low install base. 3.8 gigabytes is not, it's not a big footprint. No, that's true. That That's true. But, you know, it adds up, and at a $20 price point, it's not like this is some powerhouse of the game that we were expecting, so. Right, it's not like this is some $40 game where, like, if you don't add it to your queue, you're going to regret it forever, because now you can only, now it's going to be, you know, $40 permanently. You know, it's like, 
Yeah, okay, download it. I mean, quote unquote, buy it, add it to your library, but don't download it if you don't want to play it. Yeah. yeah. And especially buy it now yeah. because um, all of March games are leaving. We do have some yeah. April games coming. And so I should point out that the April games were announced. All those out. The, the one that everyone is talking about is, of course, Mad Max. Um, sure. Mad, I was talking Mad about Max it. Mad Max is. <laughs> I don't want to say controversial, but, uh, you know, people had opinions about it. So okay. that's for PS4. Trackmania Turbo, also for PS4. For PS3, we have In Space We Brawl and Toy Home. And for PS Vita, we have 99 Vitas. Vitas with a D-A, not T-A. I know that's confusing. Mm -hmm. And Qbert Rebooted, because we needed a Qbert Reboot, you know. Dude, I love Qbert. Let me tell you. Yep. Yeah. But haven't you always wondered why? Why does Cuber do what he does? Well, I hope that Cuber rebooted really gives us that mystery. Story. I really want the story. I really do. Well, since this comes by with both PS3 and PS4, you will get to experience that on the show as well. Awesome. We should also point out that we have not played two of the games from March, and uh, we apologize for that. I was out of town, and there were only four weeks in March, but there were five games. So, yeah. math doesn't add up yeah we still have um Catherine something something and yeah, some other game down. that has two B's as the first letters of the title but we don't remember Claire right. extended cut and bombing busters bombing uh, busters cross plays that <laughs> we'll hopefully get to um yeah any promises but we are aware We're... and we'll try to review those as well yes but we don't want to delay Mad Max, which is going to be an exciting one. Right. Right. And then April is going to be kind of a tricky month. And then May is going to be weird, too, probably, because of your stuff. And then, yeah, so, you know, we'll figure it out. We're pretty dedicated to this, and we like we'll doing it. it so we'll figure it out for you guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, right. thank you to everyone who joined us on this mighty journey oh you see, nice. see what i did there yeah i i, I see the word mighty i heard i heard you <laughs> if you want to follow us in the gaming world how would you do that um you would... are o t o c s hey isn't your little icon a mega man dude is that you um, on the playstation my Network? icon is uh, a classic arcade cabinet Oh, that must be someone else then. Every time I look at my friends list, there's someone that has the little, like, Mega Man looking thing. I don't know. I guess I'm wrong. Anyway, I'm Ratchet and Clank. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Just, just find Ratchet and Clank. And just, you'll be just search for Ratchet and Clank. You'll find me. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll uh. see you next time on Two Gamers, One Trophy. That's right. Mm-hmm. Sure. See you later!